going on, guys? Welcome back to another interview edition of Learn Crypto. My name is Nick Hellman, and today we have with us a couple team members from Linda Project, Stephen Newton and Justin Tether. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. Doing good. Man. Perfect. Doing good. So Linda Coin is a proof of stake digital currency striving to create utility products that allow Linda to be used in everyday life. We're going to dig deep into this. Obviously, we've already done an interview with some of these guys, including Jonah, one of the founders. Uh, earlier, so make sure to get over to our YouTube homepage in the interview section if you want a more in-depth dive into the Linda project. Also, with Linda doing a Shakes the Grave event over October, I kind of wanted to make this interview a little more special and wanted to do a Linda Coin giveaway. So if you've been here at the channel, this is nothing new for you. We do giveaways all the time. But if you're new and just watching this interview, simply hit the like button, share this video, and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment in the comment section below with your Linda wallet address and you are entered to win. We will draw one or multiple winners during the live show on Monday at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. So if you guys want to briefly kind of give us a background on yourself, what your name is and what your title is within the Linda ecosystem, that would be great. I guess we'll just start with you, Stephen. Hey, Nick, I wanted to ask you, uh, what, what is the bounty on your, uh, on your contest there? I don't know. I haven't quite decided yet. I was thinking maybe multiple winners out of a hundred thousand Linda coin pool. And that's coming out of my own personal wallet. I'm not being paid by Linda coin guys, but uh, obviously you guys know I've talked about Linda in the past. I do have some nodes on their network and uh, I want to give back to the community during this uh, shakes the grave event that you guys got going on. I think that's awesome, man. I think, uh, I think we'd be uh, delighted to uh, match your bounty. There we go. There we go guys. It just doubled up there. We would be delighted to match it. So, uh, with that being said, uh, my name is Stephen Newton. I'm the CFO of Linda Coin. Uh, we are a peer-to-peer -peer project uh, that is launching Linda X. Uh, Linda Coin has taken on a lot of new partnerships and things in the future, in the past here that uh, really started to shape these projects and bring things together. Um, so yeah, I really uh, am excited to uh, let everybody know what we've been up to. There we go. And how about you, Justin? Uh, yeah, I'm Justin. I'm the uh, technical solutions guy here. I uh, basically am the liaison between the community and our devs, as well as the exchanges, our devs, and uh, making sure that they all get updates and making sure that we're on the right track, as well as doing some small development work on the side. So for those of the people who are watching right now that know nothing about Linda or the Linda project, you know, where does Linda fall in this crypto universe? You know, what's really your target market for utilization of your network? Are you more of a peer to peer currency? Are you a protocol platform? Can you explain a little bit of a background on Linda? I think Linda would be considered a more peer to peer uh, transaction based technology. Like I think that we have been focusing a lot on um, like mass, mass adoption is big, letting people even who don't know much about crypto into Linda and into crypto itself with our My Staking Wallet product, but also working towards the payment side as well to, uh, <clears throat> to, you know, to make it more accessible for anybody to use cryptocurrency. Yeah, and I, you know, and I, I agree with Justin 100% there, and I'd also like to add, I mean, really, it's a peer-to-peer, -peer, um, uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, ecosystem with us building utilities. And, uh, you know, really giving a lot of meaning to why you would want to either purchase Linda, but, you know, and also fo focusing around the reward structure and everything else that it brings to the table. And talking about that reward structure, Linda is a proof of stake crypto. Is it possible that you can explain the token economics of your POS on your network as far as how many Linda do you need for masternodes? What do you earn? And for those of uh, us who don't have enough money for masternodes, what is the staking reward? Uh, just if you have any amount of Linda coin. Um, so it, it, the breakdown is pretty simple. I think it's a right now. So we've been changing it a lot over the last few months where we have done some pretty extensive changes to our network in terms of both rewards and how it operates. When we removed uh, mining or, or proof of work from our network, we also changed our staking percentages. So it's 60, 40 split of the block reward. Um, of each block and 60 that goes to stakers and 40 that goes to mash nodes. Um, but that works out to mash nodes are worth 2 million Linda a piece. They get 3,200 coins a day, roughly there. They have been switched to uh, flat rate payouts. It used to be kind of a lottery style where everyone would kind of get whatever, uh, whatever the block reward was. And then um, 
and they'd go on their merry way. But it wasn't, it wasn't uh, fair to like the other people running master nodes or somebody might make a hundred thousand a month and the other guy might make 40. So it was much better. I think for us to switch that to the 3,200 uh, flat rate payouts, which is what we did recently. <clears throat> and then, yeah, just the 60, 40 split on regular stakers block rewards. Awesome. It's not too bad. Yeah, not too bad at all. And really, I participate on the network. And I think, you know, my little tip would be um, as far as getting the most, as far as compounding your interest, I use the uh, My Staking Wallet that you guys have. All these links will be in the description below too, guys, so you guys can get involved. But the My Staking Wallet is kind of your uh, one-click masternode and multi-coin staking wallet. I know you guys have some other partners over there. Maybe in a second, Stephen, you can kind of name off some of the other coins integrated in your platform. And what I would do is host masternodes on My Staking Wallet. And then any of your rewards, you can send them over to my node pool, which is more of a, uh, how would you say it? It's like a grouped pool of Linda in which it helps you earn more consistent rewards and payouts on these smaller staking amounts. And that oh, yeah. way you're kind of compounding your interest up. And then once you earn enough Linda via that, you can either hodl Linda, you can sell to Bitcoin, or you can put those towards another master node on the Linda network. So that's kind of how I go about it and really getting the most out of the proof of stake and kind of providing security and verifying the transactions on the Linda network. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, and we appreciate every single person who contributes to our, to our network. Uh, I think that's part of the, one of the good things about my sticking wallet is that every single uh, user is also an individual contributing node as well. That uh, if you're staking on my sticking wallet, you're creating blocks just like every other block producer out there. It's pretty interesting. And Steven, do you have a list of all of the uh, coins that you kind of partnered with as far as your, uh, my staking wallet and my node pool available? Um, I don't know if I have it on hand, but, um, you know, I know we've added uh, several here in the last couple of weeks, Epic Coin being one. Uh, I know that uh, we have more in the pipeline uh, coming soon for some of the uh, announcements. Um, some of the other ones that uh, I know that we've had on there for a while now, Shard, uh, I know Linda X is available. Um, how many, well, what else other ones are on there, Justin? Oh, there's a few, man. So we got Linda Shard, Electra, a USX coin, Colex coin, Social Send coin. We just opened up mash nodes for Volcano coin and Epic coin. So you can do your uh, one-click mash nodes for those as well. Um, and we have a, a few others on the in the pipeline as well. Just not able to talk about them before they. Yeah, there's so much going on to these platforms that the, you know, the team has been diligently adding other teams to that uh, it's been exploding at a rapid pace to where sometimes it's hard to catch up unless you have a list in front of you. And that's also one thing I liked about what you guys were doing is obviously you created these tools and you didn't just kind of hoard them for yourself. You kind of opened it up for mutually beneficial partnerships, which I think are really needed in this crypto ecosystem to really have cryptocurrency as an economy flourish here moving forward. And I think that's pretty awesome. I think also the major ones that aren't integrated yet that there was rumors of in the past would be Digibyte and RDD. Obviously, Digibyte isn't stakeable. RDD is. There's some massive communities there. Are those still in the uh, on the in the in the cards to be listed to either of these platforms or wallets moving forward? Oh yeah, I, I mean absolutely. I think with RDD, um, their tech they're, they're very busy. They, they they don't have they have a small team just like us, and they're a little bit bigger than us. So in terms of collaborating with us to get their wallet on our network, they were not able to kind of follow through and assist us in that. And there were certain things we had to do, like a pull request on their GitHub and stuff that wasn't able to get done in time. And so we haven't listed them yet, but uh, we're at the point of like, as soon as we get a hold of RDD and actually sit down and talk to them and ensure that this is what they want and everything else, uh, then we can list them. I think it's just been a breakdown of communication with us, with them. We were supposed to list DGB as well, but it's basically the same thing. Yeah. Those kind of, it seems like, especially with DGB or bigger coins, you don't um, get to contact the team as much. They're not as available. It seems like, well, especially with DGB because there's no, there's no founder. There's no like one voice with DGB. Mm -hmm. So there's no, like everyone's kind of like, yeah, you should list us. But then they're like, mm, I, I don't know. And it just becomes kind of like a mess for communication. I think yep. more than anything. And that's really one of those projects. UTXO who didn't have an ICO is completely decentralized. Doesn't really have a CEO and a hierarchy structure. So you're really reaching out to more of a group of individuals trying to come to consensus on how to implement into various exchanges, wallets, et cetera. Oh yeah. It's much more difficult than 
just like a regular coin. Yep. So the next thing I wanted to kind of talk about as far as Linda is concerned is I think one of the things that goes unnoticed with Linda is that you guys do have the optionality of stealth transactions. This kind of is moving it towards the privacy sector that I think is so important for cryptocurrencies moving forward. Just like I wouldn't want you to be able to see how much money I have in my bank account. I think the same applies for crypto wallets. You know, why doesn't this really get discussed or used or demonstrated more often? Uh, is it still not fully integrated? Or do you guys kind of want to make that more of a point moving forward once you get more merchant adoption on board? Well, I don't know. It's a, t it's a, it's a tough sell. I think there's, I think there's, a, it's a, there's two parts to this. A, our stealth transactions are fully, they're fully integrated. It works 100%. Um, they can be used from the start of our coin, basically. Now, um, now, I would say in terms of putting any sort of focus into private transactions, that's not the route that we're going. It's an option, and it should always be an option. We feel like it should be not something that's taboo at the very least, but it also is not something to build your uh, entire market on either, I feel like, because when it comes down to, like, if, if we were talking about actual serious mass adoption, uh, companies don't want private transactions. No. They want to be able to print receipts. They want to be able to know who, who bought this and that. And in any real sense of the word, you won't get large corporations. You won't get anything like that if it's, if it's something that is like the main point of your coin. You know what I mean? If you build your entire coin on privacy, you, you may have cut yourself out of the biggest market possible with crypto. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we're talking really mass adoption, security and being able to do transactions is merely a feature of that mass adoption um, to be able to move forward at, as, you know, as a whole, to be able to have all the legitimacy that Justin's speaking of. I mean, that really has to only become a feature that has to be there, but at the same time, that, that cannot be the main focus. I mean, Go ahead. No, sorry. And I was going to say, even some coins are going the opposite direction and they're, you know, uh, building some sort of identity thing where you can, instead of sending coins to an address, you send them to a name, mm -hmm. um, which I understand the complications of having your wallet balance out there, but I'll tell you what, in terms of sending coins to somebody, it would be much more um, for like the older generation or people who aren't like crypto minded or technologically minded to be able to just put a name in and have it be verified that this is actually going to this person and not like I messed up the the account and I missed a capital, you know what I mean? Or, or something wrong. And then the, the, the crypto was burned. Yeah. I feel like stuff like that rather than private transactions is kind of the right step yeah. towards mass adoption. And I kind of, I kind of agree with you there. What you're talking about there, as far as name, that kind of goes towards the pay, PayPal model or the cash app model where everybody yeah. has a, has a name that comes very much more user friendly. And we talk about that a lot in order for, <laughs> crypto mass adoption to come into play and people to start really using this stuff on a daily basis. It needs to become more user friendly to where my mom or my grandma can pop on a wallet on their phone or whatever it may be and walk into target and buy toilet paper. And yeah, that is I mean, one aspect there for sure. I, I think that's the biggest thing that we focus on in terms of Linda, I think is we've really focused our, our business model on, on, on building products that make mass adoption easier. Um, like I know both my parents were on master nodes on the, MSW app. They have no clue what they're doing. Don't get me wrong. They, they have absolutely no idea where coins come from <laughs> or, or whatever, but they're still able to open it up, check it, see that they, and they can't do anything with them really. Like they're that incompetent in the, in the space, but regardless, um, they seem to like being able to open it and see them gaining coins every day. And the, they really enjoy the process at the very least. And it really shows the power of a good GUI and uh, yeah. what's going on over there with my staking wallet. I mean, I mean, I think it's nine ninety nine to host a VPS, and then I think seven ninety five beyond that. And it's really just one click, guys. You set up a login like you would with Facebook, anything else. Make sure to put your two FA on there to be secure. Yeah. Obviously, I always recommend to have your coins in a hardware wallet if possible. If you don't own your private keys, you don't own your coins, but. Yeah. If you are going to have it on exchange or a master node, make sure to have a, a strong encryption as far as password and username is concerned. Enact the 2FA. Make sure you have your proper email address, et cetera, so it becomes as, as safe as possible. Well, the download your wallet. Download your private keys. Our My Staking Wallet uh, product allows you to both download your hard wallet.dat file as well as take your unencrypted private keys whenever you want. And so, like, that's something we implore all of our users. Keep a copy. Keep two, three, eight copies. 
if something were to ever happen, you know, you have to make sure your safety is number one. There you go. So, you know, this, a lot of people are like, what is the Linda shakes the grave in the background? And you guys made it a point that you guys wanted to have kind of 31 spooky days of Linda announcements. And you've had some pretty good ones so far. And in my opinion, they're just going to keep getting better till the end of the month. Of course, I find myself towards the near end of the month because I'm pretty important, right? No, I'm just kidding. But uh, Stephen or, or Justin, if you could kind of go over some of the major announcements that you guys have made so far and uh, why you think it's beneficial to Linda, to the investors, to the users, and to really the future of your project and your ecosystem as a whole. <clears throat> That's all you, Stephen. We just really wanted to bring a lot of attention to Linda. Um, we wanted everyone to really understand that uh, we, we wanted to spotlight Linda because of the upcoming uh, ICO with Linda X and everyone being heavily invested and also worried about, you know, where we're, we're, we want to make, we want to reinsure our community of Linda um, that, uh, you know, Linda is nowhere near forgotten, nor will it be excused by any means. And, you know, so we took this month to highlight some of the things and we wanted to put together a, a little theme that, you know, we could start launching a lot of new things off of our platforms that, uh, you know, we had been conjuring up and trying to make moves for by adding other coins to our platforms by, you know, doing giveaways, really getting us listed on different things, really, you know, bringing a lot of light to the project, you know, that, that really, you know, shows people that, uh, you know, Linda's going nowhere. Actually, it's going one direction and that's north. And, uh, you know, us as a team are going to continue to push both of these platforms to the best of our ability. And that means building working uh, products by, you know, working products by being out there, being reputable, being, you know, everything that we can be to actually push Linda to the forefront. So uh, we're doing a lot of good things that are working out, but uh, there, there's a lot of things still to go. Perfect. And I think uh, off the top of my head, some of the things that you guys have done, announced already this month is you do have a new, couple new coins coming to your platform. I think Volk was one of those. Uh, you guys did sponsor. It wasn't a NASCAR car, but what 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 was the uh, racing? <laughs> it was a Formula Drift car. There yeah. Formula D is one of the bigger sporting events coming up nowadays. Uh, I think drifting has really come into the forefront. And uh, we got that opportunity to sponsor their car and be the main sponsor. Uh and man, they live streamed to a hundred million people per event. It was, uh, you couldn't say no to that. And the guy's car ended up actually being orange too, which kind of fit perfect with your guys' logo. <laughs> yeah. Well, it couldn't have fell in better. I mean, honestly, with the, the announcements coming with the, uh, Halloween theme and everything, him having just the coincidence of having a Lamborghini bright orange car. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better match. And, uh, you know, Matt's a really good guy and him and John really put out, you know, really try to push Linda Coin to the forefront by putting all the stickers on the cars for us and, you know, going out there and really busting their tail at the races. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's definitely a beneficial uh, partnership to where it's, you know, it, it works out well for everybody. And, and is that kind of going to be more of a, a long-term marketing ploy? Like, are you guys going to have the stickers on the car for the remainder of the season or is that just oh, yeah. kind of a one event thing? No, no, no. Um, actually, uh, that, that was the last race of the season. But we're looking forward to next season. But uh, I do know that Matt is going to be traveling to SEMA, uh, which is the biggest car show uh, held in Las Vegas at the end of the month, where the car will be there with him uh, at, with the Linda Coin display on it. So there, we have a lot of things coming up that, uh, you know, we're really pushing towards to, with promotion with Matt and looking forward to next season. That's awesome. And I think the biggest news that you guys just made last night, or you kind of teased it, is that uh, Linda X may have a larger liquidity pool coming soon. You guys did announce that you may or may not be, or I guess you are being added to a new exchange, but you can't really give the name. Now, I'm not expecting that you're going to give the name on here. That would be pretty awesome, though, I must say. But can you provide a little, a little bit of details as far as where this uh, exchange falls in the kind of the ecosystem of all exchanges right now? Well, it's top 10. Okay. For sure. Um, as I pull up coin market cap to actually confirm that <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, yeah it's top 10 for sure in terms of uh, bitcoin volume and i think that put it over 150 million just kind of going off the top of my head right now i don't know yes. exactly what the volume is today yeah i could, well it, it's it, it, i guess it depends on every day right with the 
Well, the big, the big thing is, is that, uh, you know, I know that the community and the team have both made huge strides and the community's waited on this for months and months. And, you know, we've really been trying and it, it there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes to make these th kind of things capable and possible. Um, it, it's, you know, it's been something that's been long awaited for. And, uh, you know, the team has worked really hard to get to this point and we continue to push farther because this isn't the end by any means. This is just the beginning. So, you know, that, that we're really looking forward to pushing the bigger and better things. Yep. I know the first time we met, uh, as far as the interview was concerned with you guys, with Jonah and you, that that was one goal was to get on more exchanges, larger exchanges, which provides more liquidity to the network. Obviously, exchange listings don't affect the technology of the underlying cryptocurrency, yep. but they are much needed in this ecosystem for accessibility and liquidity to be able to really get more partnerships and integrations. Uh, so well, I think that is the biggest story. thing, the biggest thing is the volume. Um, you, you have to have the volume to be able to have even an opportunity to really see your coin flourish. And that, that's what these bigger exchanges bring. Um, you know, the partnerships do come, they, they're an after product of, you know, your coin being represented on, on a larger exchange with more volume. That, that, that is true. But you know, the biggest thing is the volume and it's hard to get. I mean, we have really, it, it's been a, it's been a painful process that we've gone through for the last couple months because I mean sometimes you can't even get them to work with you on anything so mm -hmm. it's it's tough to even get responses sometimes so I mean th this has been something that everybody has fought really hard for and I know that we're really proud of do you have any anything to add there Justin as far as the exchange listing and what's going on with the liquidity pools for Linda well that's I think that's about it I think we've I think <clears throat> we haven't really struggled with um liquidity but we've definitely struggled with just uh i think view uh, people noticing our, our coin and everything else and i think the biggest thing that a large exchange gives you is uh, a much larger like you're saying a much larger pool of investors or people who are interested in this space who can say hey what's linda even just seeing it on front of them i think really makes a big difference rather than you know, hearing about us on Twitter once in a while or something. Yeah. And that kind of, that kind of goes back to me saying, you know, the safest place is in a hardware wallet. So you have kind of an exchange risk with some of these smaller exchanges and some people just don't feel comfortable uh, accessing or buying or using some of the coins unless they're on some of these larger exchanges. And I think that's why it's more important now than ever, especially during the bear market where some of the volume and liquidity is drying up. I think the, uh, the, the focus is on the large exchanges and the, and the, the safety that you might have in storing some of your coins there. So definitely excited to hear more about that. Sounds like you guys can't leak the name today, but hopefully you'll make that available here shortly. Yeah, we're not able to. I'm sorry. I just aren't able yeah. to. Yeah, that's that's fair enough. Of course. Honestly, I mean, they, they hold you to the letter and it's not, you know, that's just something we can't release. Uh, they're, they're still going through all their process us and to follow regulations and SEC and everything of that nature, you know, NDA has been signed and you just, just something you can't do. So we've gone over, Linda, what it is and kind of the staking behind it. And, uh, you know, if you guys want a more in-depth analysis and in-depth look into Linda Coin itself, like I said, go to the interview section on our YouTube homepage and refer to that past interview I did with them where I really hammered some uh, token economic questions to make sure that this project was legitimate. And obviously, I believe so as of now. So, you know, jumping from that, you guys are working on another project called Linda X. Can you explain what this is and how the community can get involved with that? Absolutely. Well, I wouldn't, uh, I guess I would call it another project, but it, it, it falls under the same scope of our project. It's still our exact team and we're still uh, working on them both and we're not dropping Linda in any way, shape or form. But Linda X is our token platform, kind of similar to Ethereum. Um, but it's much more locked down in terms of like not everybody can create contracts or dApps or anything like that. We're strictly going for the business targeting, uh, you know, specifically targeting brick and mortar businesses that aren't yet in blockchain or businesses that would like to make the move to blockchain, but don't yet, uh, quite know the exact steps they need to take to be able to move their current data structure into the chain or, or whatever else that they need to do. <clears throat> um, and so we've made a, quite a few changes to what was one, at one point a base Ethereum network. Now we've changed it to a POA algorithm um, and, uh, and a bunch of like locking down the contracts and everything else and, and creating the system that we have as well as um, working on sort of an app store style uh, experience, 
where uh, DAP creators will be able to log in and submit their contracts and have them, you know, reviewed. And then uh, once accepted, you can post your contract to the network and, and we can go from there. <clears throat> Pretty awesome. Uh, so here's the thing that, you know, obviously kind of already brought it up. A lot of the community was worried like, oh, what is Linda X? Now they got a new coin coming. What's going to happen? You know, how does Linda benefit from this entirely new ICO ecosystem in Linda X? Like, is Linda going to be one of the native currencies? Is Linda going to be used as kind of like the gas, like gas is used on Neo's blockchain? You know, what is the functionality there and what's the value proposition for the original Linda coin that so many people are holding, staking and noting right now? Well, I think the original idea was to try to make uh, Linda gas for Linda X, but um, implementing the cross-chain comp compatibility in between them is much more difficult and much more time consuming and, and would take a long time. And so instead what we've done is just link them market wise. And so um, during our ICO, you'll be able to purchase Linda X with like Bitcoin and everything else. But once the ICO is done, the only way to get Linda X is through Linda. And so we worked uh, tirelessly with exchanges to work out uh, specific Linda to Linda X pairings. So instead of having just your standard BTC, ETH, USD pairings, mm -hmm. you will see uh, strictly Linda to Linda X and then Linda X to the tokens. And then our hope with that is to try to promote both the growth of two different projects that are the same, that are encompassed under the same company. One is uh, strictly for payments and decentralized currencies, and the other one is uh, business targeted. There you go. That's kind of the assumption I started getting as well. So I would assume that Linda X is kind of going to be the gas for the new Linda X platform. Say a business comes in and wants to build on it. They'll either need to hold Linda X or buy a certain amount of Linda X, which therefore yeah. means they need to soak up some of the Linda liquidity. And then maybe you can work in something where like, hey, if you have point of sale with your new token, maybe Linda can be accepted under your merchant guidelines, et cetera. And then maybe create Absolutely. more velocity for the Linda network moving forward. Yeah, and even with this swirl pay stuff for Linda, that's going to be huge for our e-commerce side. Sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I mean it, anything that we can encompass with Linda, um, doing that. I mean because really Linda X is a subsidiary to Linda. Um, you know, every benefit, everything that Linda X will do, Linda will benefit, um, and that's the way we really wanted to build this thing. We didn't want it to, uh, for any kind of stretch of it being sh overshadowing Linda or anything like that. We wanted, you know, Linda to be the absolute benefactor of Linda X. And I mean, that's really the only way that we could link them all together with the cross networking and everything of that nature. So, I mean, really it, it people that are holding Linda now will Linda X will definitely benefit our holders that that is a given. Yeah. And if you guys want a more in depth analysis of that, uh, go to Linda's website. That'll be in the description below as well. And I believe there's a Linda X white paper, which kind of goes through how both ecosystems will be linked together and really what the mm -hmm. benefits can be there. We have a Linda X website as well. There you go. So I'll throw that in the description as well. So we kind of talked about Linda. We kind of talked about Linda X. I kind of want to get your guys' overall opinion on the crypto ecosystem as a whole right now. Obviously it's a bear market, but where do you see blockchain technology going? Where do you see some of these cryptocurrencies going here in the future? And do you, obviously you guys believe in the space since you're putting so much time and effort into it. I, I honestly believe that the space is on the verge of exploding. On the verge of exploding. Because for the simple fact that if you watch how it's been suppressed, and it's been suppressed all year, don't make no mistake, the Mt. Gox dumps and all these things were to literally, you know, run the cycle of the market. And really, with all this news coming out and you seeing nothing positive happening, I mean, you see all these transitions and everyone coming into blockchain, these huge announcements being made. And, you know, it, it's just a matter of time and this thing's going to explode. And I think a lot of it is connected to the world's economy and uh, also the, 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 the dollar. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I think really big things are going to happen in this space. They've been able to drive out most weak hands at this point to where they've driven the price down for so long. At this point, a lot of people are ignoring it, and that's exactly what happens is people get complacent, and that's when it explodes. So I really see that's what's coming in the near future. And what do you think, Justin Tether? Maybe maybe something about with your last name being Tether. That's kind of funny. I'm, I'm sure you've got some trolling as far as what's been going on <laughs> with USDT. Uh, but what is your opinion of blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies moving forward? Oh, man, I think that blockchain technology is here to stay. I think that cryptocurrencies, it's going to be a fight to the top, I think. I, I think in the end, really, there's only going to be 
one to ten that, that win out in the end, really. I think if you can't have 3,000 currencies that all do something different because everyone's just going to spread their money around too thin. Um, I mean, you might have 20, you might have 30, depending on what, you, what you're what you going to get out of that. But I think that it's going to be a real race to see what community can push themselves to the top and push themselves towards mass adoption. And I think that a big part of that is going to be a race to see, uh, uh, there's going to be a wallet race for sure to see who can build the best wallet, to build, build the best wallet that's, you know, I think Coinbase is all up there for sure in terms of usability, but um, there's still a lot of room for improvement with that. Yeah, and I, I kind of agree with you guys. And what we preach on the show is, you know, we, we tell everybody in the community right now, I think you should be accumulating. Now, this is not financial advice. This has nothing to do with Linda or anything else. But I think at, at these price levels, you should probably be accumulating. We've seen this before in the dot-com era where retail investors kind of got in early. Institutional uh, Institutions kind of flooded their way to price depreciation. That way they can build an infrastructure and, and where they can gain off of the retail investors. And I kind of think the same thing is happening now with the backed exchange from New York Stock Exchange coming out in November or December. We got Iris X from TD Ameritrade. And we also have Fidelity now coming into play with 11 million users saying they're going to be custodians for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And I, and I kind of preach that, you know, I think there's gonna be one more market cycle where a lot of cryptocurrencies, all altcoins, whatever you want to call them, are going to benefit. After that market cycle, there's going to be winners and there's going to be losers. And you got to start positioning yourself in the coins that have fundamental purposes and solve real world problems. And uh, I think Linda coin is in the right direction as far as their GUI, their token economics are feasible. And we'll see what happens moving forward. But really, I think that we're just very early in blockchain technology. Although some people will be like, well, look at the price accumulation. We're not early in this at all. I think that the 20K to 6K will be a mere blip moving forward as far as price action. Because I always say that utilization of networks drives network appreciation. And as we see uh, the monetary policy of fiat fail in Venezuela, Argentina, Turkey, and the list goes on and on, if it starts to affecting the euro, the yen, or the USD, we're really going to see a big movement into cryptocurrencies and really kind of the be your own bank aspect of blockchain technology. Well, you really have to understand that, you know, right now we're currently sitting just barely over 200 billion as our market cap. Crypto alone has made it to what, I think 800 or seven, $800 billion uh, back in March. And if you understand how much uh, liquidity is actually in these markets, these stock markets uh, and all this other stuff, I mean, you're talking $7 trillion. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, did with, with fiat currencies crashing around the world with all these emerging markets on fire and everything like that, this, this cash is going to look for outlets. It's going to look for outlets in a very fast fashion. And, you know, the only thing that's going to be able to hold any kind of value at that point is hard assets. It's either going to be gold and silver or it's going to be crypto. And, you know, you, you see it constantly happening to where it could be overnight, you know, at a trillion dollars at our market cap, I think Bitcoin's worth 50 grand. Um, that could happen overnight, yeah. really, at this point. So, I mean, it, it's all, uh, it, it's going to be a wild ride, but uh, I expect it to uh, happen, you know, definitely sooner than later. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing it first person too. People are moving cash directly out of their countries and markets and putting them into, you know, virtual currency. Uh, we, we've had some people, I've, I can't name names or anything, but we've had people approach us about like large sums of money that they just don't like, they don't believe in their currency in their country or whatever the case is. And they're trying to move their, their stuff digital. It's they're trying to get out. Around. They're trying to get out. And like I said, the move to crypto is going to be massive. It's going to be massive in all, in any uh, realm of hard assets. So, uh, and crypto is going to be the, the wave of the future. I mean, by you talking about the different forms of, uh, you know, with them talking about the, uh, privatization or, you know, having their own privacy and talking about different coins there, that just goes to show you how much blockchain is going to integrate every aspect of our lives moving forward. And it's really just the beginning of this technology to really see where it's going to blossom five to 10 years from now. Yeah. And for my day job, you know, I work for an institutional financial advisor as a performance analyst for alternative asset classes. And I can't really say much, but I can say that hedge funds are starting to tr start to look towards cryptocurrency as a hedge or a diversifier against the current monetary system and the current markets. And I think that's a trend that's going to continue moving forward. Now, whether or not cryptocurrency will become, you know, a global currency, I mean, I can't speculate on that at this, point, at this time, but I can say 
that as far as an investable asset class or, or a commodity kind of like gold and silver, that is definitely a reality and definitely happening right now below everybody's noses. And some people just don't want to realize it. So whether you want to wait, you know, for one more dip or think we're in the bear market, or whatever it may be, but really I'd preach on accumulation and really start using some of these cryptocurrencies for the purposes. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, that's really about it. Have I missed anything that you guys want to reiterate about Linda or Linda X to the viewers and to the community that may see this video? I mean, I would say you've hit on quite a few points. Um, other than, uh, you know, our uh, pre-sale goes live on November 15th. Uh, yeah. um, that we'll be starting the pre-sale uh, with that, uh, with a purchase of, a minimum of $5, you can purchase Linda X where you will receive a referral link. Um, each individual that receives this referral link can pass that out to each and every one of their friends um, across their networks. And anyone using your referral link to buy Linda X, you will receive 2% as a referral bonus. And, you know, so it's a good way for people to accumulate coins uh, essentially free by, you know, telling all their friends about Linda X and really getting other people involved. So uh, the, the pre-sale goes live on November 15th and the main sale will go live November, or December, December 1st. There you go. Anything to add, Justin? Uh, no, other than just that what we did on my note pool, there was a private sale. I would, I would, uh, Oh yeah. Private sale versus yeah. To our community, when we did the incentive reward, um, swap with Linda to Linda X, that was our private sale to the community. And this will be our official pre-sale, um, to the public. There we go. So make sure to follow the, the two Twitter accounts that will be linked in the description below as well. I'll definitely need to get one of those referral links. And if anybody from this community is interested, use that. You know how I like to use referral links to provide giveaways during our live shows. So I can almost guarantee a large percentage of anything I receive will be given back away to this Learn Crypto community. And then don't forget, guys, it looks like Linda will be matching my uh, Linda Shakes the Grave giveaway here for this interview. So once again, to enter these, all you got to do is make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel and, and share this video. And then leave a comment in the comment section below with your Linda address. Along with that, feel free to leave a question, comment, or concern pertaining to this interview or the two projects that we discussed. Uh, hopefully, I can answer it. If not, I can reach out to the Linda team and see their opinion on any given question you have. So until next time, guys, stay tuned for your daily updates on cryptocurrencies right here at Learn Crypto.